Hey, what's happening, everybody? You're live with the Toe Bugs, and I am joined tonight with Nate from Cecil Boot Company, Lucas White, Steve Lawton, Jeremiah Craig, and Nathan Lundy. How's it going, guys? Hey, nice to meet everybody. Yo. Yeah. Going good? So we, uh, you know, we kind of touched on it last week's show about buying used boots, and people ask all the time, and to be honest with you, I am not the guy really to ask because I don't buy many used boots. So I figured I might as well assemble this dream team here. And we've got a six-person panel, so hopefully we can get some good information out to you guys. So if any of you have questions, make sure and, and drop them in the chat, and we're going to answer as many as we can. And, you know, I kind of doubt we're going to get around to everything tonight, so we'll probably revisit this topic in a future show, maybe, maybe two other shows, who knows. And then everybody stick around till the end because we have a giveaway. I'm going to be giving away five pairs of boot, boot shapers. Whoa. So five of you guys are going to win one pair and they'll be sent out to you free of charge, no cost to you, but stick around to the end so I can give you the details on how to win those. Does that include the panel? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it can. Right? I don't see why not. <laughs> and Nick, it's all going to be in a randomizer. So, can I do a shameless plug also on here? So, I also moderate the subreddit, our cowboy boots on, on Reddit. And we have another contest uh, running on there as well for anybody who's joined. Um, if they can drop a comment in the sticky post I put on there about the show, you can win a boot bag, some big four, as well as some vintage uh, custom boot pulls that nice. uh, we have available so that's awesome Man, what what group is this uh our cowboy boots subreddit on reddit uh, are you on reddit yet Lucas? That, that way we can get to it what's yeah, that I can drop a link over to nick yeah send me a link and i'll um i'll put it in the description here so that if you guys come back and revisit this Click on it. The link will be there. And I'll also, um, I can send the link out in my group email list. So everybody on that can get it. How do we get on the group email list? Email me at lonestarbootreviews at gmail.com. And let me know if you want to be on there. All right. I will do that. Okay. I'm getting How on are you that not list. on there, Jeremiah? I didn't know. There's no newsletter to sign up. I didn't know you had to email the dude. <laughs> you put that out like ages ago. I missed it. I'm a busy dude. <laughs> I miss a lot of things. Uh, I'm right there with you, man. I'm not, you know, I don't have a bunch of fancy stuff. I just, people got to tell me sometimes. And then I forget about it. I, you know, I, I asked everybody to sign up for it. And I went about four months before I ever sent out an email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. All right. So, Nathan, I think you had uh, taken some questions or had written down some stuff that people had asked. Do you want to just start off with some of those? Maybe just yeah. pose a question. We can all talk about it. Um, the, the, the hot topic that I've seen this week and, and, uh, and even in, in the past is, uh, and we'll talk to the panel here and see what these guys think about it, is, is uh, purchasing vintage uh, used lizard boots. What what do you look for? Because there's been a lot of people uh, purchasing some that, you know, cracked or damaged or things like that. And it's kind of really hard to tell because, you know, some sellers will take uh, kind of fuzzy photos and, you know, things of that nature. Maybe, you know, have them certain ways where you don't see all the cracks and stuff. So, uh, perhaps maybe, you know, the panel can, can kind of put in their input on that. And, uh, and, you know, this goes back to, uh, you know, Nate there with, with Cecil Boot Company that he's all of his stuff that, that I've ever seen on his, his eBay pages and stuff. It's all top notch. He's a, he's one of the trusted, you know, top notch sellers that this isn't an issue with, but, if, but if it were someone purchasing from an individual, what would you guys want to really look for? Maybe even 
uh, send the seller some questions or, or what, what, what's your recommendations on that? Quality of photos would be my first thing. Yeah, if you can't be bothered to, to put in more than, you know, five photos, it's going to say something about your product right away. Um, you know, you've already got the camera out. You might as well snap a couple of those extra uh, views. Um, it's real scary doing Lizard, you know, because I buy as much online as I, as I sell. And uh, I've gotten lucky. But really, you, know, you can ask them, hey, are you the original owner? Do you condition regularly? Because that's what's going to happen. The dust is going to build up. If it sits on the shelf, it's going to tear through that skin. You're going to put your foot in there, and that belly is going to rip right at one of those uh, belly scales. That's that's the that's the, the thing you need to watch out for. Yeah, unless I can put my hands on them, I don't even touch lizard online. To be completely honest, I don't blame you. I got a pair of lizards for my brother off of Goodwill, and that's really tough to deal with Goodwill because. Uh, at least the website, because they never get back to you about anything. And then they, they ship out your boots when they feel like it, when you win them. So and, and are like, they taking, are they taking those photos with the potato? Because right. <laughs> worse photos on any website than Goodwill. Right. It, it's definitely a risk sometimes for sure. I got, I got Levi a pair of lizard boots and on one of the, I think it was the right boot. There was a tear in the lizard leather that I couldn't see in the pictures just because it was so bad. But I figured I'd take the risk for like 10 bucks plus $7 shipping. I was like, screw it. It's a 10 B. You never find 10 B. So sometimes it's worth the risk, especially if it's a, if it's a, a rare size, but that's like the only time that I've ever done it. Yeah. And, and I'll, you know, if anybody that's dealt with the eBay, you know, community for a long period of time, um, you may or may not know this, but there is no such thing as do not accept returns. If you have a hole yep. in that boot and it's not described in the pictures or in text, um, you'll get your money back. Uh, e eBay, almost to a fault, will uh, will settle for the buyer's um, description there. Uh, so even if you have a do not accept returns, that's why I changed all my listings. Everything I sell now is all 100% fast and free returns. The amount of money you save selling on eBay that way too, it's just it's just worthwhile. I want to look at the seller reputation, you know, uh, especially on eBay. They've only sold once or twice. You might be finding some really rare items that they've never sold before. On the flip side, uh, do they really have those boots in their possession? With the buyer guarantee, that's certainly a peace of mind thing on eBay, but uh, sometimes you want to avoid hassle. Good points. Very good. Sorry, Anything um, else you could think of? Well, I, I mean, I kind of compiled a, a list over the, the last day of, uh, you know, what – because I'll tell you, the eBay ecosystem is almost as much about the type of buyer you are as about the type of seller you are. So if you've sold any amount of boots online, you know that there's certain types of buyers. And what you want to do is you, you don't want yourself to be singled out as one of those types of buyers. I'll, I'll go down my list here real fast if you guys give me a second. Um, so so there's a couple types of buyers that you, you don't want to fit in with. There's the I want it now buyer, right? Th this guy has, uh, you know, bought the item and then within 30 seconds, he's sending you uh, a message saying, you know, has UPS skyrocketed through your window and, uh, you know, pick those boots up and put them on a drone for immediate delivery. Uh, probably not at this juncture, uh, Hoss, but I will get them out to you as soon as possible. You got the low baller. Right. You've got a pair of boots listed at five hundred dollars. They're, you know, nice Luke Casey's um, and you get a message uh, asking if you're going to take them for 20 bucks. Uh, and that's 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 a good way to get yourself uh, on the block list. Um, you know, I, I generally like to think, you know, if you're above 60 percent of what the asking price is, you're probably in a safe space. 
you got the non-payer. These are the guys that get blocked immediately. You send messages, they never respond. Try to give them the benefit of the doubt, right? I mean, anything could have happened. Murder hornets, military coup, volcano eruption. But if you haven't paid in three days, you're probably going to get blocked um, from doing any, any more purchases. Uh, you know, if you forgot or you need to wait for payday, you know, you might need to go in and look at rebudgeting. There's the 20 questions buyer. They, they really want to know everything about the boots, which is fine. But after 25 messages and requests for photos, uh, usually I'm starting to lose some interest in the transaction. Um, and then uh, you got the wounded pride buyer. Um, so it's a little bit different than the normal return buyer, which is fine. You know, uh, this one, they feel the need to justify why they don't like the item, you know, is described. Uh, top example, I had a buyer bought a pair of giraffe, needed to return because they didn't fit. That's fine, right? It's understandable, but that's not, it's, you know, how you word it, right? The boots couldn't possibly be a 9B, even if they're marked a 9B, they didn't fit. I'm a 9B, um, but they're, you know, how dare you list them as a 9B because they don't fit me. Um, you know, that that's kind of annoying. Um, and then you got the perfect buyer, right? They read the listing, they paid promptly, they messaged you first about problems, they left feedback without being prompted. Uh, you couldn't just ask for more. And those are the type of people you will seek out if you find something in their size, maybe even before you list it. That's the type of buyer you want to be because sellers understand that you're willing to pay, you know, the money for a good product that's in good shape. Um, and uh, a lot of times I'll proactively seek these guys out and uh, learn their size so I can let them know when something juicy comes in, they might be able to skip the line. Yeah, Lucas, you've kind of, you did that a little bit with that guy selling the Hondos, right? Um, yes and no. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've, I've got his message, you know, his messages and I, and I have him let me know anytime he's putting out a 10 and a half D. Yeah. You know, so I can, maybe jump on it. I don't necessarily get it before he lists it or anything. Um, right. You know, cause you know, I, I tell him just to go ahead and do it anyway. I mean, may or may not be interested, but, uh, but yeah, he, you know, I, I would at least say I would be the perfect buyer in his eyes. Um, you know, and I, and I can't really beat his prices. So <laughs> <laughs> he got me on the hook again today and he's probably going to get another one tomorrow. So. <clears throat> Anyway. You know, that's what happens when you go to cocktail hour, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden you know, your eBay. These damn phones, if I didn't have this phone in my pocket, I wouldn't be able to look on there. You yeah. Know? Hey, that's, that's one piece of it. One piece of advice I can give everybody is if you're broke, don't get on eBay when you're drinking because <laughs> you're going to get yourself in trouble. I've done it many times. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah I'm not broke. I you know, but. <laughs> That's a, uh, that's a really he good topic that, that he brought up. That's, you know, kind of, that's kind of like buyer etiquette. You know, if you, if you expect uh, some good service, you need to be a good buyer. So, I mean, that's a, that's a really, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll tell you though, the, the uptick in sales on Friday nights and Saturday nights, man, that's, <laughs> somebody, hit <the> somebody <laughs> hit the bar up and they, they started going, mm, man, Cecil, he's got these boots up here. Let me see. Yeah, they they throw back a couple Jack and Cokes and it starts flowing. <laughs> My selling metrics go whoop. Yeah. Oh. That's awesome. Hey, I've been guilty of that plenty of times. <laughs> you, you're my foot size. You don't have to worry about too many impulse buys. There's just not many 14 Ds on anywhere. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and I, you know, I try to explain this to people. It's, it's a really interesting market, you know, used boots, particularly, you'll find an eight and a half D all day, every day in pretty much any skin in any size. But I almost have to charge a premium, you know, and I try not to make it too much, but 14s, 15s, you know, 14 triple E, you just don't find them every day. You know, it's something right. that you're going to have to to, you know, invest some time in, in finding and listing and shipping because they don't fit in them. Uh, <laughs> thinking, man, <laughs> I just shipped a pair of 
14 D shark out. This guy is in Hawaii. I shipped them out Ooh. today. Medium flat rate box. That thing looks like it's about ready to explode. <laughs> It's got so much tape on it. There's not any cardboard left anymore. It's yeah. just wrapped in this big ball of, uh, yeah. That's not funny. Yeah, so you can saw I got them in there. Boot makers struggle to have boxes that fit 14D. What are you doing with a 14D size foot anyway? Good Lord. I don't know. I'd look really <laughs> stupid with small feet, though. I can tell you that. <laughs> Six foot two. I don't want to have little bitty pigeon feet, you know. These carries my foundation. Jim Collins in the chat says he's a 15D. So if any of y'all run into any of those, let him know. Uh, there's not many. There's a few out there. I got a list. I have I have a couple guys that come to me specifically for uh for a 14 or 15. Oh my gosh, and you'll see. If you get a pair of like ants or turtle, you know, oh, in a field, goodness. oh, you don't, you can't, you can't ever find them. Right. So that's that's something. That I I'll, know I don't have any turtles because of that. <laughs> but I'm looking, Cecil. Just keep me in mind. <laughs> it took four turtles to make one pair of fifteen. That's, that's true. The, that's why mean, they're endangered? <laughs> I've got teased all my life. My buddies used to talk about that they could use my shoe boxes for coffins and stuff like that you know <laughs> i bought some boots from cecil did you i believe i have What'd yeah you get? I, get good quality and they were beautiful and exactly as described <laughs> is what i think what they were, That's what i'm right? talking about just a <laughs> dream to order those <laughs> keep praying one of these days I'm going to find somebody that has a relative that passed away that's got about two dozen pairs of Lucchese San Antonio's or something yeah yeah I got a pair of 13B Hornback Lizard up right now and you know I, I think a lot of people you know and, and I understand you know, people will look at some of my prices and go well that's a little bit on the more expensive side you know it, it it there are places you can go for bargain shopping and i don't you know have any issue with anybody doing that but what what we're trying to do as a store is to set ourselves up as a place with consistent quality every single pair is hand handled by an individual that inspects it from top to bottom you know make sure there's no tears make sure that you know everything is uh, died consistently that there's no you know scrapes so doing that does take a little bit more human resource capital so it is going to kind of bump the price up a little bit more um so so, so but you know that there's going to be consistent quality which is yeah. i think why people look at you know lucases or they'll look at a pair of rios i got a pair of jb hills that just changed my life yeah. um the other day, uh, you know, alligator with with cuffs, and they fit my thighs, which I can almost never find a good pair of vintage boots that fit my thighs because I got these big old chunky ones from, you know, lifting for so many years in the Marines. But uh, you got boots yeah, coming I, up to your thighs. What was that? You got boots coming up to your thighs. Calves. Oh man, my uh, my calves, my bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking waiters. The time I found a pair of JV Hill full Nile Crocs on eBay. The guy had those and a couple other pairs. He had a black pair too. And he he bought them in Seattle at this thrift store. I paid I don't know. I'm going to say around a thousand twelve hundred dollars for him. He paid twenty five dollars for him at the thrift store. He forgot the receipt in the boots. Oh, but oh no! I was happy because you're talking about an eight ten thousand dollar boot. Yeah. yeah. So wow, I'm good. But that was a happy day. Yeah. One of the other things that I look for, you know, when I'm buying is for somebody that looks at the, the age of the tag and is able to kind of correctly describe uh, mm -hmm. the, 
the the how vintage I, I like to call it true vintage because you got a lot of people that'll say 1960s 1950s you know but there is a very specific label and tag for Nakona and Justin and uh you know all of these boots that were back in the 50s and you know it, it's very different than what some people describe as a, a vintage boot so you really got to make sure that the seller knows what they're talking about um I will tell you, you know, some of my stuff is even labeled differently just because of eBay selling policies. I can't yeah. call something elephant. Yeah. I, I have to call it antelope. I, I don't know why, because elephant's completely legal. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, but, California, uh, where eBay's based, that's the issue. Yeah. Elephant yes. is not legal to sell in California. So that's not why. Even Python. You can't, you're not, they, they outlawed Python too there. Yeah, well, I tried to sell a pair of uh, ostrich on Facebook Marketplace, and it kept flagging it every time I wrote ostrich in there. And I finally just had to, I just put full quill and left off ostrich, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> it's yeah I, I don't, I won't even <laughs> list any turtle or any or anything on there anymore. I just put that directly on my private website, um, just because I've had so many problems with. You know, but by, by sellers out there, they're competitive and they'll they'll sit there and watch and report your stuff uh, the second it goes up. And then, uh, wow. you know, a week later, your store shut down in seven days. You know, one thing so, when it comes to used boots, I like to see pictures of inside the boot, at least the footbed and heel area, a clear picture so you can see if it's pegged or if it's cushioned or what's inside the boot. You know, of course, I love to see pictures from underneath the boot of the arch and soles and stuff and heels. But a lot of times those pictures get left out of listings. I don't hesitate to ask a seller, can you send me those photos? Yep. Exactly. Good, clear photo. We should be happy to do it. On most occasions, uh, I'll tell you, I mean, I got a full time job and, and four kids. Sometimes I forget, but I'm always happy when somebody sends me a message because I know they're serious about, um, you know, looking at all the angles and, and they're probably going to be uh, a repeat buyer if they're if they're interested to the point where they're asking for more photos. This is somebody who, who has some experience on eBay um, and, and knows that they want a quality premium product and they, they want to know what they're buying. So. It's a you're good sign. A professional for the reality, you're a professional seller. I mean, there's honestly a lot more boots that an individual that maybe he's never even sold boots before or sold on eBay before that you see out there. And a lot of times that's the gyms where somebody's husband passed away and they're ready to part ways with it. And they're not used to selling on eBay or wherever that might be, Facebook, Craigslist. Yeah, OfferUp, Depop, um, you've got Mercari, uh, Poshmark. You yeah. know, I, I tend to stick on eBay for selling purposes, simply because I mean, Posh, 20% of your sale, I mean, that's that's highway robbery. Um, and then, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this Depop thing that the kids are using these days. I bought a couple pairs off there and that's, that's kind of sketchy because you pay, you don't know if it's going to get sent. There's no like customer service. There's no, you know, let, let me return it. You know, so you're taking a chance on some of the, some of the sites, usually Mercari and Poshmark are pretty good about not as described, you know, they don't have a 30 day policy like eBay, but uh, it'll be a, a decent experience on those two other sites. I'll tell you. What about online to in-person like, offer up or Craigslist or something like that. I mean, I've had some decent luck, but I'll tell you offer up. I've had a lot of issues with recently. So, um, you know, somebody hit, had, had listed a pair of, uh, 12 D turtle for $75. I said, yes, please. So I went ahead and picked those up and I ended up getting, I'm not complaining, but they look like a pair of 12 D Paul bond, black leather, custom stitch completely different boot than what i ordered filed a complaint with offer up no no never received a message back 
never received, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep them, but, uh, you know, it's just an interesting uh, experience that I've had. So I don't know if anybody else has had an experience with them, but uh, my favorites are definitely uh, Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay uh, for my money, and then Goodwill, definitely. But again, those pictures, goodness gracious, I feel like they're taking those pictures with their feet. I don't yeah. know what they're, what they're doing over there, but... Hey, Jeremiah, what about, um, would you mind maybe going into, I know a lot of people maybe are looking for a first pair of boots or something and not wanting to go real high end exotic or high dollar, you know, I mean, what would, what kind of tips would you give somebody who's wanting to, you know, maybe they're wanting to spend a hundred dollars or something and they just want a good boot and they're looking at the used market. I'd say hit up Nate's eBay. I mean, it sounds like it's awesome. Uh, you can get a lot for a hundred dollars on yeah. eBay for real. And yeah. I always, I always like to look at the outsoles and the heel caps. Like, uh, Steve <clears throat> wants to see the, the insoles, uh, the insoles is going to tell a lot and the outsoles is going to tell a lot. I like that. There's so much that you can tell about how much a boot has been worn in the past. Um, just by looking at the outsole. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. And one of the things I'll tell you that yeah, I completely agree with Jeremiah, especially the part about checking out my eBay. But um, <laughs> the you know one of the good things though about buying used is you're you're setting a lower price point, and you're able to kind of figure out your size in every style. Vintage Justins fit differently than you know mid two thousands Lucases fit. Right, a lot of vintage boots are a size smaller or a half size smaller. So when you're getting into vintage boots, you need to understand that, you know, the, the lasts were not always made the same way. Um, Tony's are always pretty much true to size. I've, I've had a lot of good luck with them, but vintage Justin and vintage Nakona, uh, you can see behind me, I'm a, I'm a super big Nakona fan, but I wear a 10 D in vintage Nakona's and I wear a nine double E in, in JB Hill. So when you're, when you're buying used, get get a couple of different brands you know if you've got a hundred bucks you could probably pick up a couple of you know beater pairs of, of leather you know maybe two or three for that price point and then figure out where you are on the size chart that way when you're going to pull the trigger on something that's a you know american alligator or something you really want you know the sizing's dialed in tight i got a so question the, for you guys uh so let's say I get, all right. So what do you do, Nate, if you're selling, let's say you come across a, a full custom boot that was made to fit somebody and it doesn't say nine D in it or whatever. If you come across that, how do you sell that? How do you let people know, Hey, this may fit you or, or it may not. And then, you know, on the opposite side as a buyer, how do you go about buying something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of guys, and I think if you bought, you probably know widest width of the, the bottom of the sole, as well as heel up against the wall, tape measure from the, the wall to the toe. And that gives you a, a generally a good feeling that you're in the right ballpark. So I know mine is a four and a quarter inch wide and 11 and a half inches from the wall to the tip of the toe. And I know that generally if it's in that ballpark, it's going to fit me or be pretty close. Um, you know, so if you can get that kind of dialed in, you know, get a Brannock fitting, that'll help. Uh, but also um, those measurements tend to be pretty standard and, and you get a lot of requests from that as a seller. It's a lot of, you know, can, can you, take the measurements for me. And I generally don't do it on every listing because most of the ones I have are, are measured and it takes a lot of time already to do the, the listings that I have, but I have no problem with doing that for, for a buyer at any point. It kind of goes back to what you was talking about, Nate, with the tags. A lot of these tags, you know, with the different vintage boots and stuff, that will be an indicator on that size too, if they're going to run small or if they're going to run Obviously, they're not going to run big, but like you said, all the vintage stuff, they are they kind of have a sweeping uh, scale to the to the size. Yeah, I, I have some 
eight late 1960s full uh, whale that I picked up a little while ago. And uh, they're a 9E. Normally, that's something that'll slide right on. I got to get them resized uh, because they're, they're so old that the, uh, you know, the, the, the last they were using at the time just weren't kind of what you would stand, get in a standard shoe store. So um, something to consider when you're buying, you know, I'll try to label mine 1960s, 1970s. Nakona tags are easy. Tony tags are easy. Lucchese, you know that if it's Lucchese San Antonio, it's kind of post 1970. If it's Lucchese El Paso based on a tag, you can kind of just, once you learn and you've seen a couple hundred pairs, you could pretty accurately describe the age just based on the tag. I have some pretty cool ones that are back from the 1950s. Justin used to use this little inlaid tag in the 50s um, and, and early 60s. Uh, and another indicator for Tony Lama, so back pre-1960, they would use three letters for the state. So you'll see T-E-X as opposed to T-X, right? So it kind of helps you discern post-1960, the states changed the way that they would label the, you know, the abbreviations. So you can gauge, there's different tells in, in a lot of these older boots. Interesting. Dude, that's good information that Steve, uh, Steve and, uh, and another gentleman, Jeff Meadows, on the page talk about putting together some little folders with some information on these boots, just like what, uh, what Nate's talking about here. You know, you, you know, Luke Casey, uh, El Paso was going to be a certain size. And then, and then the, uh, Luke Casey, uh, San Antonio, you know, of course, it's going to run, you know, a little bit smaller. So, you know, kind of scale. It's not a half size. It's yeah, about a half a size, yeah. yeah. But so do T.O. Stanley's, Ammons, I mean, Rio's yeah. and Mercedes. So many of them all run small for the vintage stuff. And, uh, you know, then I'm told, I wish I could yeah. find out, that like T.O. Yeah. Stanley made his <laughs> last larger when he went back into big business again. Uh, I haven't been blessed to get my hands on any of those, but you got to pay attention without a doubt. And the yeah, I've, sold, I've sold these Rios of Mercedes uh, three times now and had a, a, a size return. Rios just run small. A lot of the higher end ones, I, t I tend to find the Casey run a little small on me, Rios, but I'm a wide, you know, so I've got a real, real wide foot. And I think, uh, you know, trying to fit myself into a vintage 10D or 10 and a half D sometimes is just a, personal decision you know when you get like a pair that's real close to being your size and it's a great skin and you're like mm, i'm gonna stick my fat foot in there anyway i don't care yeah. you know and, and you end up having a, a little bit of pain to deal with for a couple of days yeah you can get permanent foot damage i've got some nerve damage from wearing my t.o stanley's too small when i was in my 20s and uh that doesn't go away you know you get into some of the true custom makers, uh, ML Letty, or I mean, for the most part, even Paul Bond used to be pretty much custom, and some of these other uh, Letty brothers and Franklin and some of them guys, uh, all the old timers, uh, those were true custom boots, and rarely are they going to have any kind of markings in them that's going to tell you what size they are. You're going to have to go off the measurements and as Nate mentioned for me, I know that if it's somewhere around 13 inches, uh, you know, that's kind of weird is that I'm wearing a size 14 boot, but they don't measure 14 inches long from the outside to the tip. Uh, and I'm looking for four and a half to four and five eighths wide, which is around a D width. Yeah, I find it's usually about like a quarter inch for every half size. So I'm at, you know, at a nine, I'm at like 11 and a half inches and then a nine and a half will be 11 and three quarters. So usually it's a pretty good indicator when, when you're talking about each size up, each half size up, you get about a quarter inch. And as far as resizing goes, um, I bought a, a used pair of ML Letties that maybe got worn for one day and I bought them locally and uh, they were too big. And I took them to ML Letty's and it took me a couple of years before I convinced them 
they should rebuild that boot for me. They kept telling me to use insoles and stuff like that. I said, look, man, I bought enough boots from you guys. Uh, I just need you to redo it for me. And it was worth it without a doubt, but they get a little bit antsy depending on the hide because uh, that, that toe cap is typically glued inside the boot. And sometimes trying to get that loose from the hide, uh, it might tear. You know, we talked before about like on Lucchese, they won't rebuild that boot or even resole it anymore, I don't think, if it's a hide that's not still available. Or if somebody else has done any, any other kind of work of to it. Of course, that too, yeah. yeah. They'll do, redo it if it's only had heel caps, but somebody's messed with the soles and they won't touch them. Yeah, you bring up a really good point there too uh, that I think a lot of people who are just getting into buying don't understand is that, you know, if, if it's something that you really like, you, you kind of sometimes you have a little bit of play. Um, you know, if you just need one width out, you need one, you know, a half size bigger. There are a lot of these companies that are doing relasting, uh, you know, for a different toe shape or, a, you know, a slightly larger size um, for around, you know, 200 bucks, which, you know, if you're talking about a high end pair that you're really interested in, like you're saying, ML Letty, it might be worth it because a brand new pair of ML Letty is going to run you a couple thousand dollars. So, you know, just, just, uh, there's a lot of these guys now that are doing the, the relasting and I've had, I've had some success with it. You know, um, I'm not a fan of changing classic styles. I like to keep, you know, the style that was originally intended by the maker when it was handmade, you know, classic American. Uh, but, but, you know, if it's your pair of boots, you can do whatever you want with them. A lot of people are turning them, you know, into square toes and because you, you never had the square toe style around when, when ant eater or, or anything else was being made. And if it's something that you're really interested in, a lot of these guys are doing really great work. Um, and, uh, you know, you can get a little bit of play out of uh, an older pair of boots. Yeah, it's kind of like a classic car. You know, you can you can restore it to the way it was on the showroom or you can make a full custom hot rod out of it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Lucas. Where is it? Uh, Jim Collins wants to know if you can tell him about some of your favorite boot brands. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think everybody knows, at least from my post, that it's definitely Lucchese. Um, you know, that, and that really just originated from my dad. Um, you know, I, I saw him wear those all the time. And, and, you know, now that I started buying some, and of course, when I first started out, I couldn't afford them. So, you know, I, I tried all the the other brands or the cheaper brands. And, you know, it's, it's not so much just the name, but it's more of just the way it fits. Um, you know, it, you know, whether, obviously I've never had actually any Lucchese 2000s. Um, you know, I've just had the classics and then the bootmaker line. Um, but, you know, definitely those, I mean, obviously that's what's the majority of my collection. Um, and then recently I've gotten into the Hondos. Um, you know, even though they're made in Mexico, I really just like the traditional design and construction of them. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they're basically leather inside and out and a hard leather insole and, you know, they're not, uh, you know, not trying to be really anything else. Um, and, and I just like that feel, you know, I mean, even, you know, I, I gave the Chisos, you know, I, you know, everybody, I mean, it's pretty unbelievable how many people are on here saying they're the best boots they've ever tried and, you know, greatest boots ever. And, you know, as far as construction and the leather, I definitely am a fan. Um, but it's just something about wearing that insole, you know, it just, I don't know. I feel disconnected. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel right no matter what I try. Um, you know, so, so yeah, right now, um, you know, the Lucchese's, the Hondos, um, you know, I actually, believe it or not, have not tried Rio's, um, and I don't, I don't know if I ever will. It, you know, once I found Lucchese, the 10 and a half D, it pretty much... You're dialed in. Yeah, you know, once, once you're dialed in, and actually in the Classics line, I take a 10 D, um, but... You know, in the in the bootmaker line, most of those, other than a few of my Mexico-made ones, most of them have that slightly padded insole. 
Um, so I, I take a 10 and a half in that, but you know, all, you know, the classics that I've had have all been 10 D's, but I don't know. It's just either the last they're using just matches up good with me. Um, yeah. and it's definitely, I trust me, I wish, you know, I wish some of these, you know, cheaper as far as money wise brands fit that way. Um, because it's, it's not easy on the pocketbook sometimes, but you know, that's what, that's what fits me. So, right. So your, foot, your foot hits that padded insole and it just feels right, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> even in that bootmaker line, like, you know, I know the, the classics with the hard leather insole that, I mean, technically that's what I would prefer 100%, but, you know, I go to put my foot in those, you know, the, the Lucchese sharks that I got that are made in Mexico or the, you know, the, the goats that I have or the, even the ostriches, the Lukes that I have, they have that slightly padded insole and it's just, it's just enough to where it still forms your foot, but it just gives just a little bit of cushion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's money. Yeah. Let's talk about one thing really quick. There's a reason why Luke Casey moved from San Antonio to El Paso because it's on the border. And I would say, all of the El Paso based bootmakers have workers that come across the border every day to their factory and make boots. There's nothing wrong with Mexican made boots provided no. it meets all of your needs. You know? Yeah. Uh, 100% agree. The history of boot making, craftsmanship and stuff, so much of it comes from Mexico. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that there's still people that are willing to make boots by hand because yeah. it's not easy on your hands. I don't know if you've ever seen the photos of boot makers' hands, but it's not pretty. Right. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize, you know, Montana and Cowtown, they've been around since the 1930s, 1920s, um, making boots in Mexico, and mm -hmm. they're handmade. You know, Leon Guanajuato right now is probably one of the capitals of people that that are you know master boot makers um yeah. you know it certainly is something to be said for the the american made tradition but absolutely there's some beautiful styles that they churn out i've been seeing a lot of interesting stuff coming out from montana a lot of custom tops custom inlays um, mule ears i love those i'm a sucker for mule ears um you know but a lot of really good stuff coming out of mexico yeah i will say i did buy a used pair of the vintage Nakonas. Um, kind of off of off of Jeremiah's pair he had there, and you know I they were just a half size too small, and I, I tried to make it work, and you know it, obviously for what I paid, it really wasn't worth getting them relasted or anything like that. But I tell you what, for those couple of days, I mean, you know, I I won't hesitate probably to buy another pair of them. I will just now go to an 11D, yeah, um, you know, for the next time. But they they had they seem to have that closest I could get to the Lucchese feel with the hard leather insole as well. Um, I think they were the, the shoulder or, you know, whatever, whatever model JC has there. Um, well, that's a good point too. I mean, whether you're talking used boots or new, I think, I mean, all of us have tried on a pair and we thought, man, these are sweet, but they feel about a half size too small, you know, and you, walk around in them you're like i don't know maybe i can make this work you know but in my experience i you know i, I do that all the time where i try to talk myself into it and i always end up talking myself out of it because i just realize <laughs> it's not going to work you know and so that's yeah, something to, to to think about you know occasionally if you're dealing with a like a calf hide boot you might be able to get them stretched a little bit but more often than not if they're too small you know it and they're just too small <laughs> and I'm not even a fan of, you know, some people say, well, why don't you just go ahead and miss on the high side and then you can, you know, fill it up. I'm not even a fan of that, to be honest with you. Half yeah, size I'd rather small, not. Size big, I'd rather not even mess with it because yeah, I want I'd to rather not do that so either. Good. But I guess given if, I, <laughs> yeah, I'd Where rather just have them fit. Socks or put an <laughs> insole in or, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm not into that. Yeah. yeah. It's better to be patient. It, it's yeah. feels so much better to be patient. It is because like, like Lucas was saying, you know, when you find the ones that fit you, 
you know, I mean, fit's the most important thing. If they don't fit right, they're never going to feel right. They're never going to be that comfortable. But when you find the ones that fit you well, I mean, it's the best footwear in the world. Yeah. And people call you a fanboy. I, you know, I don't give a shit what they call me. If, if other if other boots fit the same, then I would wear those fucking boots. Uh, <laughs> nothing about that, you know. So they can say what they want, but <laughs> Dude, there's I, nothing wrong with it, man. Just wait till you start a YouTube channel. <laughs> 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 oh man! You can't force a fit. You know, you get you get a pair that's just a little bit too small. And you'll wear them around for a day. I got a pair sitting on my shelf with the Justin 1776s, and they're a 10B. And as much as I, as much as I wish and hope and dream that I'll wake up one day and they'll slide on, ain't gonna happen. They look yeah. pretty though. Yeah. They have to go on a diet and make your foot shrink. Yeah. <laughs> you get older and you gain some weight, your foot does slide out. Hey, I'm. They can experience that. Yeah, I uh, lost 100 pounds, and I went from a size 12 double E to an 11 D. Wow. And I guess it's just when you get heavier, man, your your feet spread out more, I guess, because of the weight, you know. But, you know, it was weird. It, it, it's kind of like, you know, you have to buy all new clothes, but then you end up having to buy all new shoes and boots, too, because nothing fits. Man, so you had to replace a whole collection there, huh? Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I never had a big collection before I started this channel. I had, I think I had three pairs of boots that I ended up having to replace. I I kind of grew up kind of in the country here in countryside of Rowlett, Rockwall, Texas. And, uh, you know, I'd buy a pair of boots and wear them into the ground for a year and a half and go buy another pair. You know, I, there was no rotating or only wearing them every other day or anything like that you know was, we had animals to feed and all that stuff so we just bought boots and wore them you know hey uh <clears throat> getting back to the main subject is buying used boots some other things that you want to do and obviously you can't necessarily do that online but a key sign that a boot is for the most part worn out is if the inside leather is starting to crack at the pressure points around uh, your little toe and mm -hmm. near your big toe or on the edge of the toe box itself. All of that is from the sweat that your foot makes. I realize a lot of people can't afford to have a lot of boots. My rule is, is I wear them one day and I try and rest them three days with cedar shoe trees in them, boot trees to help remove that moisture out of them and keep them in shape. Yeah, yeah JC's got a pair of boulets that the toes are missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I showed them the other day. Yeah, it's all cracked and nasty inside from wearing them every day, like on tour yeah. and stuff. I know exactly what you mean, Steve. If I came across a pair of that, on eBay or, or anything like that, I wouldn't touch them. Not touching them. That's that's why I, I want a pair of boots that have never been resold that are like look at look great on the bottom because I know what people do to their boots. <laughs> You're exactly right, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point too. Is I'm I guess I'm the new school type where, you know, I'm I'm not. I guess you know if it was something I really really wanted, but. I'm, I'm with you, JC. And if I, if I look at the soul and I can tell it's not the original soul and it's been resold, I usually don't touch it just because I don't know who redid it. And I also know that it's been worn enough to where it's going to warrant a resole. I'm probably not going to want to deal with it anyway. And that's just personal preference. Exactly. All the boots you see used have been half sold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the big. You know what you're looking at because there's going to be a distinct line between the heel and the main part of the soul where it's been pieced together. That's the biggest hint. That's such a good tip, Steve. That is. That's Honestly, great. if they've been half sold, you don't know how many times they've been half sold. Exactly. Mine got a half sold on them right now and they've been resold six times. <laughs> There's probably a hole under it. 
they if they have that uh, half sole on there, there's probably a hole under it that your foot's going to be dipping into. Mm -hmm. There definitely you, is. You see a lot of used boots also with the picture that shows the insides, and especially if the top or is getting to the top of the shaft. The leather will be cracked or white discolored and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's some signs that that boot is probably been worn a lot. It's not always an indicator that you don't want to get it. If it has still has original soles on it, you can tell. But still, something to think about because, I mean, I don't know how many of y'all, but at one point in time, there was in the 70s and 80s, there were some issues with the heel counters getting fried on the bigger brand boot companies where the heel brand inside, not the brand, but just the heel counter inside the boot was overcooked. And they get heated up when the boot's made and they get fried and then they will crumble at some point in time, start splitting and falling apart. I had a pair of Laramie ant ears. The, 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 hair, the, the heel counter was folded yeah. in half. I had to get the whole thing yeah. removed yeah. Uh, and put a new heel counter in. Whoa. Steve, you also brought a, up a good point with the, uh, with, the, with the tops and the shaft. There's another thing that I always look out for that when you were saying that uh, reminded me is that if it's if it's if the boot sags too much, the top and the shaft, if it's sagging, then that is definitely um, really worn. And another thing that I like to see as a buyer is the is the boots without any uh, like the boot boot shaper in there when they're selling it. I want to okay. see how it stands up on its own without like uh, the, the pool things in there or anything, anything in the shaft at all, or even like cedar boot trees. I want to see it, how it sits. It's yeah. the best, best hints are come from just um, seeing the boot without anything in it. You know, I've got a couple custom pair of boots that I bought used. Like I have one that's a, a full quill ostrich with ostrich belly tops and those things won't stand up. The shafts won't stand up. They just fold over. Yep. But they're very new condition. It's just sometimes the material, if you know what it's made from, is such that it's not going to stand up either. Sinking down, like you mentioned, is different than folding over. Yes. Yes. Okay. And can we, can we all agree that one of the greatest sins ever perpetrated by a boot seller is folding them over and putting them in a box? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I open that box, <laughs> yeah, and fold it over in there. You know, as much as people buy off Amazon these days, I, I keep all my little air packs and every pair I sell is stuffed yeah. full of air packs. So they're not folded over inside the box because yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to pull a pair out and see that. I know that you, you haven't taken your time. Yep. You know, who's going to be the guy that does that, Nate. And I'm sure some of us have experienced this, but how about the seller that plans ahead and takes pictures of his boots about two weeks into wearing them and then ends up selling them about a year later. Ah, because oh, I, that's scammy. I've gotten boots that you can tell are fucking brand new. And then when you get them, they're fucking trashed. What you do now? Well, like like Nate said, luckily they were eBay, and and even though they didn't return take returns, you can basically send them pictures and say, "Look, this is the way the boot was shown. This is how I got it," mm -hmm. <coughs> and they'll reimburse you. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a real big topic, man. I mean, uh, asking for current pictures, and then and then like Nate said, you know. Uh, specifically, that, whenever I buy boots now from 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 eBay, I'll message that seller and ask specifically for a full size box and not bend the tops over, causing damage. You know, because like you said, they try to cheap out on you know maybe the generic shipping cost or whatever a flat rate box or what is cram these boots in a flat rate box? You know, fold them all up and shove them in there and. There you go. You know, you got a mess on your hands. And then like, 
Lucas talked about there. I want some current photographs. I want to know what that boot's condition is today. Well, unless they're going to give you like a time stamped photo, how are you going to know they're current? Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. and then it comes down to being a reputable seller. And if That's you have correct. Yep. where, you know, you know, because mine goes straight from that stump that I take my photos on, they go straight onto the shelf and uh, they're, you know, wiped down and conditioned beforehand. But we're talking about tops. It's not hard. It's not hard to, to find a storage solution. These things are a dollar at Walmart, you know, and they'll keep them standing up yep. nice. You know, you, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money, um, you know, but you can still find some storage solutions that'll keep your leather from bending and tearing. And, you know, you just throw them in your closet at, yeah, it's, it's not a good investment. You know, if you're investing in a good pair of boots, you need to keep them, you know, with the the kind of money that you spend on them, you know? Sure. Yeah, they definitely true. need to be stored properly. I so, hey, you know, the names aren't that expensive. Yeah. And the boot, boot shapers really aren't that expensive when you consider, you know, the cost of the boots you're buying. You know, I mean, Absolutely. spend a couple bucks and, and protect yeah, them, cool. you know what I mean? Hopefully I'll have some after tonight. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking it. about. Well, speaking of that, I think I'm going to cut everybody off now and we're going to talk about the giveaway. Um, Nate, do you want to say again about your giveaway on Reddit? I put the subreddit link in the chat yeah, and so, in, the, in the links down there. So Yeah, so our Cowboy Boots is a growing uh, subreddit community. Lots of really great positive people on there. Um, you know, uh, I'm one of the moderators, uh, so, but, you know, we, we're not receiving anything from this, just trying to build up the, um, the community base, get more subscribers, uh, have more folks on there. We've got about 7,000 subscribers, uh, six and a half maybe right now. Um, but if you comment to my post, that's a uh, count of Cecil Tucky, um, you'll, uh, you'll be entered in automatically. It's just going to be based on the upvote system. So the comment with the most upvotes about tonight's stream, the topics that we talked about, the, the people involved, maybe your experience with used boots, um, you'll receive a boot bag store, which is a good way to keep the dust off and keep the, uh, the lizard from cracking, as we talked about earlier, as well as some Bic 4, Bic More 4 exotic uh, leather conditioner. I use that on every pair um, before they're listed, and I use them on my personal boots as well. And then a pair of uh, vintage uh, boot pulls. So if it's uh, getting harder for you to bend over and slide them things on, they've given you another you know, good eight inches of room to hook your, your pulls and slide those suckers on. Um, my belly. From, from, from uh, what's that? My belly. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I'm also having... A, uh, a giveaway. I partnered up with Voot Boot Shapers, and five of you guys are going to win a pair of Voot Rodeo Boot Shapers, which is their model that's specifically made for cowboy boots. So to win that, what you need to do is subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, like this video or stream. Um, I need you to go to Voot Boot Shapers Facebook and Instagram and like both of those. I put the links down below. And then I need you to comment in the comments here and say Voot Scoot Boogie. Not Boot Scoot Boogie, but Voot with a V. Voot Scoot Boogie. And I'm going to go through, find all the comments. I'm going to put them in a randomizer on next week's Live with the Toe Bugs live stream, and we'll figure out who the winners are. And those will be sent out to you at no cost. So good luck to everybody. Ronnie Dunn just fainted. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank all you guys for stopping in on the panel with me, Nate, Stephen, Lucas, Jeremiah, Nathan. Thank you guys. Uh, we're probably going to re, you know, revisit this again in the future. Maybe not too long from now. We'll get Angel involved as well. And uh, I mean, this topic can go on forever. You know what I mean? So, sure. anyways, everybody, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch y'all on the next one. Take thanks. it easy. Thanks Bye. so much, Nick. Thanks for right. Appreciate it, guys. Okay.